Hi, everyone. This is Bradley. Today, this is a tutorial talking about the shade motion graphics. Uh, in the past, I've already made a, a tutorial talking about shade motion graphics. And today is just a little bit of extension from that example to or part two from that tutorial. So here we are having a very simple setup, like uh, we have six nodes, uh, six nodes in total, including a preset. This preset has already been discussed uh, last time in example two. Basically, what it does, so let's show our original cube. So in our original cube, I added a vertex color. And I'm using a fold to control the vertex color of our cubes. And within the shaders, within the shaders, I'm linking the vertex color to the factor. And the factor is going to determine the color transition, uh, whether it's red or orange. And then everything feeds into emission. So you have kind of different colors. And by moving this fold, which is actually uh, controlled by these empties, you can scale up and down, you're actually changing all this color. So you can do a lot of things with these kind of things. So that's why you need to use the animation nodes and making interesting animation or motion graphics. But uh, this node has several important issues. For example, you're looking at the left upper corner. So it, it takes uh, 31 milliseconds to execute this node tree. This is still an acceptable amount of time, but assume if you are actually running a kind of high amount of objects, then it hits to be higher, high, uh, more and it takes more and more time to execute the node tree each time until a moment which it might not be very favorable uh, in your opinion. It's still acceptable, but it really depends on what you're actually doing. Uh, the reason is actually that uh, you are actually control the vertex color and our cube has eight vertices Right, so it unnecessarily calculate everything eight times because each object not only owns one time so while you actually calculate the vertex color for eight times. It's not very effective or efficient That's why there is another method that you are going to use the object color transition. This is already This is in the version 2.2 Actually, it has been added for a very long time. I just didn't discuss this. What it does is it, instead of using a vertex color, it actually uses the object color. So if you go to the viewport display, you can see there is an object color portion. So let's pl plug this object, the audience object, fourth into fourth. So within the fourth, you can see the object, the, the viewport display color is white, and outside it becomes black or sometimes it becomes gray if it's in the range, uh, in, in the edge of fourth. And you can, and in this case, instead of using this vertex color, you can use this object color into the factor, and then you are, not everything, this is another way to do shade motion graphics. And looking at this left upper corner, this becomes much more, uh, it becomes much more faster, like two milliseconds. So like a 10 times faster, or actually even more than that. So up to now, it seems like uh, these two nodes are actually doing very similar function and the object the color transition node seems much superior than our object shader list node. So does it mean this node is no longer needed? I should delete that from this preset library? The answer is actually no, or actually it's a little bit tricky because there are a kind of fundamental difference between these two methods. In object color transition node, we actually control the object the color. And uh, I hope you realize the fact that uh, you only have one object color socket for the object, which means you can only use one, you can only produce one factor, one factor from this method. So you can only plug that into one factor or other things, but uh, basically they will be synchronized. And you cannot do a kind of a sequential transition. So it's not like, okay, I can determine multiple mixed factor with different factor. It's not possible with this method because all these factors will be the same. So, however, for vertex color, you can have as many vertex color layer as possible. So if you go to the mesh tab, you can just add a multiple uh, vertex color layer and to copy all this vertex color layer, you can just uh, uh, just uh, reselect all these kind of objects. And immediately you will find, oh, it seems like we have a very high execution time due to all this vertex color layer. But as soon as you just uh, tweak whatever other values 
within the node tree, all this time will go back. So the copy is for one time, so that you don't necessarily copy every frame or each time you are executing the node tree. And then now if we plug this object into object list within this shared, uh, shared list node, you can see all this kind of execution still takes 30 milliseconds. And uh, let's take our vertex color instead. And uh, you're still kind of doing the same function with this the same amount of time. Uh, so it, it's kind of the execution time is actually independent from the vertex color layer you have. And the vertex color layer that you're using uh, is determined by this vertex color index. And the index for computer always starts from zero. So the zero actually means the first layer, the one means the second layer, and so on. By default, it always uses the the first layer, but we can actually specify which layer you're actually using. So we can actually stack uh, with the um, shader list. So let's do with another list, put the object back, and we can use another fourth as well. So let's duplicate this controller. So we can use one controller and the other controller. And if I put the fourth within the fourth, and let's change the index to one. So now what will happen is let's take another vertex color. You can take that to vertex color one. And within the fact, uh, within the color, you can decide whether it's kind of blue. Uh, and we're going to use the controller. So now you can actually make kind of multiple color transition with two different four, it becomes very more interesting. But this this kind of performance certainly cannot be done with this object color because each object only has one object color, while you can have multiple vertex color layer. So this is a kind of fundamental difference. Just to remember that you are definitely hurting the performance when you are using this vertex color method. But I also I just also come up with some method that's may solve this problem in the long run, but I'm not 100% uh, sure yet, but we will see um, probably in the future. If there is any, but the, just, but the thing that won't change uh, is that these two methods are different and there are pros and cons in each of the methods. And finally, it just end up uh, with the fact that that's, uh, whether you would like to use one over the other or use both methods or whatever. But uh, as I said, if you're just uh, doing kind of a simple color transition, then you always sh you should always start with object color transition, and then to consider whether I need the vertex color or not. Okay, so these are the points. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.